At some point in your studies of trigonometry, you'll learn that the sine and cosine of the angles of 30, 45 and 60 degrees have special values, and you may be expected to remember these values, which may have led you to try and remember this table for an exam. Well, the problem, in my opinion, is that on its own, this table is not very interesting, and there is quite a lot to remember. But also, my pet philosophy with mathematics is that a good teacher should be helping you to understand where these values come from rather than getting you to rote learn a set of values. So in this video, I'll show you how to derive these values for yourself so that you don't have to remember them. And deriving these values is quite easy and fun to do. And hopefully the process will give you a better insight into the theory behind these fundamental trigonometric functions of sine, cos and tan. And let's start with the angle of 45 degrees. And to do that, I'm going to construct a triangle with two angles of 45 degrees and one angle of 90 degrees. Alright, so here we have a right angle triangle with the two acute angles being 45 degrees each. And from your primary school geometry, you should know that this is an isosceles triangle. And an isosceles triangle with two equal angles will also have two sides that are equal to each other. So the two shorter sides Let's give them a length of 1. We could give them any length we like, but a length of 1 unit is probably the most convenient. So we have an isosceles triangle with two equal sides. We need to work out the length of the longer side. And since this is a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras theorem to work this out. So the length c squared is equal to the sum of the two shorter sides squared. So c squared is equal to 2 and therefore c is equal to the square root of 2. So the longer side or the hypotenuse has a length of root 2. And now let's focus on the lower left hand angle. So now that we have the values of all the sides we can say that the sine of 45 degrees so the sine of the angle that we are interested in is given by the length of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So the side that is opposite to the angle has a length of 1 divided by the hypotenuse which has a length of square root 2. Alright, so we can say that the sine of 45 degrees is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2. However, normally we would rationalize this denominator. So we would turn this square root 2 on the bottom into a whole number. And to do this, we simply multiply the top and the bottom by square root 2. So this process is called rationalizing the denominator. So this gives us square root 2 on the top divided by 2 on the bottom. Okay, so square root 2 times square root 2 is equal to 2. Now similarly, choosing the same angle, but this time, let's find the cosine of it. The cosine of an angle is given by the length of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So here, the angle of interest is still the bottom left-hand angle, and this time, the side that is adjacent to the angle has a length of 1 as well. And the hypotenuse again has a length of the square root of 2. So we can conclude here that cosine of 45 degrees is also equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2. Okay, so from the 45, 45, 90 triangle we have sine of 45 degrees equals root 2 on 2 and cosine of 45 degrees equaling root 2 on 2. And this makes sense, right? Because sine and cosine are simply just ratios of the two shorter sides to the longer side. So if the two shorter sides have the same length, then they would have the same ratio to the hypotenuse. But what about the tangent of 45 degrees? 
Well, tangent is simply defined as the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So if these are the same value, then that ratio will simply be equal to 1. So the tan of 45 degrees is equal to 1. Now, for the angles of 30 and 60 degrees, we need a triangle that has those angles. Let's construct an equilateral triangle. Alright, so an equilateral triangle has three equal angles, and therefore it has three equal sides. So by this definition, because there are 180 degrees in a triangle, the angles of an equilateral triangle must be 60 degrees each. And again, let's assign a length of one unit to each of these sides for convenience. But I said we need a triangle with both 30 and 60 degrees in it. So what we can do with this equilateral triangle is cut it in half directly down the middle. Okay, so in splitting this equilateral triangle in half, the angle at the top here is split into half as well. So we have 30 degrees each on either side of the yellow line. Now I only need one of these triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and delete one of them. Alright, so we have an angle at the top here of 30, we have an angle down the bottom here of 60, and we have a right angle on the bottom left. And since the triangle is split in half, the base of the triangle used to be 1, and since it was split in half, it now has a length of 1 half units. And now let's rotate this triangle by 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So we have a hypotenuse of one unit, a height of one half units, and the length of this base, let's label this as A, and this is something that we need to find out. And following a standard convention, the hypotenuse is normally labelled as C, and the other side is normally labelled as B, so these are all in lowercase letters. But the angles are labelled with capital letters, so the opposite to little b is the angle capital B, opposite to the side little a is the angle capital A, and opposite to the side little c is the angle capital C. Alright, let's use Pythagoras theorem to work out the side length of a first, of little a. So by Pythagoras theorem, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, and we can rearrange this to have a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. c squared is equal to 1 squared and b squared is equal to 1 half squared. So we get 1 minus a half squared is equal to 1 quarter and 1 minus 1 quarter is equal to 3 quarters. So the length a is equal to the square root of 3 quarters and this simplifies to the square root of 3 divided by 2. So the side A has a length of root 3 over 2. Now let's take the angle B. Sine of the angle B, so sine of 30 degrees, again is equal to just the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So opposite to the angle B is the length of little b, which is one half, divided by the hypotenuse of one. So a half divided by one is equal to a half, and this is where we get the result that sine of 30 is equal to a half. Now similarly, cos of the angle B, so cos of 30, is equal to the adjacent side to that angle, divided by the hypotenuse. So adjacent to the angle 30 is the side length square root 3 on 2 and that's divided by the hypotenuse of 1 and this gives the result of square root of 3 on 2. Alright, let's create some extra space here. Now let's focus on the angle A and once again sine of the angle A, so sine of 60 degrees, is equal to the opposite side of the 60 degrees 
divided by the hypotenuse. So opposite to 60 degrees is a side length of root 3 on 2. And divided by, again, the hypotenuse of 1. So sine of 60 degrees is equal to root 3 on 2. Cosine of 60 degrees is the adjacent side of the 60 degrees divided by the hypotenuse. So adjacent to the 60 degrees is the side small letter b, and that's equal to 1 half, divided by the hypotenuse of 1, and this gives cos of 60 is equal to 1 half. And now what about the tan of these angles? So tan 30, so tan of angle A, so tan of 30 degrees, tan is always the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So once again, the opposite side here, in this case, is 1 half divided by the adjacent side of root 3 on 2. This is equal to 1 half times 2 on root 3. The 2's cancel, so we get the result of 1 divided by root 3. The tan of 60 degrees so tan of the angle B, the opposite side in this case is equal to root 3 on 2 and the adjacent side is equal to a half so here we have root 3 on 2 times 2 over 1 again these twos cancel and the result that we have is square root of 3 so using just some simple geometry and Pythagoras theorem and the laws of trigonometry We've derived the exact values for sine, cosine and tangent for the angles of 30, 45 and 60 degrees. And so now you know where these results come from. Alright, so that'll do it for this video. If you have any questions, please use the comments below. We will explore how to find exact values for angles bigger than 90 degrees next time. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. Until next time, best of luck with your studies.